This is 5-Minute Power Platform, where I'm doing short experiments in Dynamics Flow, Power Apps, Azure, and more. And today, we won't be quite 5 minutes, we'll be a little over, but we'll be building a Power App mobile application where you can take a picture of a face and use that to connect to the Cognitive Services API that does facial recognition in Azure. So here's an example of what we'll do. You can click on the face, it takes a picture, we'll send it using Flow into the Cognitive Services Facial Recognition API, and then it'll give you some interesting facts about what it thought it saw on your face. And one note, what I'm going to be doing is a simplified version of a longer video that Paul Flaherty posted, and I'll post a link into that. He's got about an hour and dives into more detail and builds it out in a little more robust way than I'm going to do in this quick demo. We'll start by creating a new mobile formatted Power App, and the first thing we'll do is we'll add on the camera control so that we can take a picture to send to AI. So let me format this. You can see it turns on my camera, and so we see a picture of Dwight, who's going to be our cheerful sample face for a lot of this. And so the first thing we'll do is we'll set the on select so that we uh, clear and create a new collection call photo. And then we're going to set call photos value to the uh, camera one photo property. And so that'll populate the photo from the camera into that collection. So next we need to show people the picture they took. And so we'll add an image on top of this and we'll set the image property of this after we get it sized to be the value of the photo stored in call photo. We're gonna choose the first one because there could be many, it's a collection. So first call photo URL, and that'll populate that. And then of course, the people may not like the photo they wanna take, so we'll use, click, put the trash can on there. And we'll use that on the on select on the trash can that'll clear call photo, and they can take a new photo. But finally, we need to also make sure that that image isn't in the way of the camera. And so we'll set the visible property of the image to not is empty call photo. So the uh, image will not show if call photo is empty and then way the camera will show. And so now we can see here, it looks pretty good. Take a picture, see the picture stored in the collections as well. So now we're ready to create our flow. So the first thing we're gonna do in our flow is we're gonna upload the photo to SharePoint. Now this is a little bit of a cheat, I'll show you why, but I've created this faces document library. And what we'll do is we'll do SharePoint create file and then we'll enter in our document library here. So I've created this uh, faces document library or faces site with the uh, faces document library as well. So let's choose that. Let's name our file. We'll just use um, from the expression, just UTC now. We'll just name it the current date and time, keep it easy. And now for the file content, we can ask in Power Apps and that's going to give us this create file content parameter. And that's why this is a little bit of a cheat. There are other ways to get that parameter but this will give us that create file content parameter and that'll give us the file content coming in from Power Apps that then we can then manipulate in the rest of the flow. So the images that come in from Power Apps are in a base64 encoded format and we need a binary format. And so we're going to use this compose function which allows us to use these expressions in a general way. There's a data URI to binary function and that will allow us to convert this into a binary format easily. And so we'll feed that our input file from Power Apps. And then the output of this will be a binary file that we can use in the next step. So now we're gonna add an HTTP connector and that's gonna allow us to just in general call any web API and we're gonna use this to call the face API. So we're gonna do a post and now we need the URL and we'll get that from Azure. So now in Azure, we need to provision the face API that we'll use. So we'll come in here, we'll go into AI machine learning and face, we'll give it a name. Power Apps Face API, make sure it has a subscription, all that. Uh, we'll choose the free pricing tier and we'll create a new resource group. Once we've got that set, we can click Create. It'll tell us once it's provisioned and then we can go to it. And this is the where our API endpoint is and we're gonna use that in the flow next. So we'll paste that URL in there and we're gonna call the detect function. So we'll add that to the end of the URL. There's two headers we're gonna add, one for the license key and these are defined in the API documentation. So we'll add in that. We'll pull our key from the Azure portal right here. And we'll paste that in there. And then the other one is the content type that we're gonna add in. We're gonna add in binary data that we just converted above. And so we'll put an octet stream there. Next is the type of data we want back. We want face attributes, and we're going to choose just a few attributes to return. We'll hand in the uh, output from above, the binary photo. And then now, because we're doing this custom HTTP call, we need to format the response as well so that Flow knows how to interpret it. So we'll pass in the body from above into the response. And then from the API documentation here, 
what we'll do is we'll, uh, there's our other, there's our API parameters that we just passed in. Uh, from our API documentation, we're going to copy a sample response and we'll use that as a sample payload and it'll infer a schema for us. That makes it pretty easy. And so we can give this a name and save it. Now we're ready to implement it in our application by attaching it to a new button. So in here, let's add a new button, change the name of the button uh, to uh, call face API. And then we'll uh, choose action from one of our flows. There's our new flow and it's gonna add it there and it's going to prompt us for the parameters. So we're gonna pass in uh, the first entry of our call photo, our photo URL, but it's also gonna return data. So we're gonna do a clear collect set call face data. So let's test this out. Let's call our face API. Once it runs here, we should see in our flow, we should see a successful run. Green check marks all the way down and we can see the details of what was returned from the HTTP call and back into Power Apps. So now we should be ready to, oh, let's check on our collection too. So there's the data in the collection. So we can see that looks like we've got some data back. So now we're ready to add in our labels on our Power Apps. So to do that, we'll start by adding in uh, the first label here. We'll put in, uh, we'll make this one age. And the next one, let's add in one for hair color. And then we'll do baldness. Baldness is just gonna return us a number from zero to one. And then another one for happiness, which is also gonna be on a zero to one scale. So let's space these out a little bit better. We've got some kind of PowerPoint-like functions here to distribute these. And then let's start, uh, let's add another set of labels that we can uh, copy and paste in here and we'll start bringing in the values. So let's start with age. So for the first row from our uh, collection of face data, we're gonna choose face attributes age. You notice they all update with our data. Now hair color is easy to modify because we can just kind of tweak the end part of it there. Multiple hair colors are returned in your face data. We just want the first one. That's the most likely one, it's his best guess. So we'll choose the color there and it thinks Dwight has brown hair. And then finally for the baldness, that's the hair dot bald and looks like he's not very bald. I'd agree with that. And then for happiness, you know what? Let's add in a slider. We'll put that on a zero to one scale. So we'll drag our slider down here. And then what we'll do is um, we'll, we'll define the scale with some icons here, a frowny face and a happy face. So let's drop in the frowny, frowny emoji here on the left-hand side, so not happy, and a happy emoji along the other side. So we'll set that slider to have a scale from uh, zero to one, since that's the values we'll get back, and we'll set the default to be the actual value we get. So let's copy this, uh, copy that line of code there. We'll set that to the default, and it's gonna be uh, from the emotions of the face attributes, it's gonna be happiness. So one thing that's different about the desktop app versus the, uh, the mobile app is on the mobile app, you have a front and rear camera. So let's add in a toggle that we can uh, rig up to switch between the front and rear cam cameras. And so we'll go to the camera and we'll set the camera property to the value of the toggle. So zero or one, it's gonna be toggle one dot value. And that way when we switch that toggle, it'll switch between our front and rear camera. And finally, let's add one of these themes here that'll dress it up, make it look a little more, uh, a little slicker and we're ready to test it out. So this time we'll, we'll test out with a photo of the rock, take his picture, call the face API. Sure enough, hair color is blank, age 44 and uh, 0.97 bald. It looks pretty accurate to me. So now it's time to save this. Let's give it a name here. Power up Space API demo and save it. And now we're ready to try it out on our mobile app. So here in the mobile app, uh, we can uh, go through some of the prompts here, allow it to use a camera, okay. Uh, got it. And then we can see the forward camera. Now we can see the rear camera. Tap my face, take a picture. It's going to call the API, take a guess at my age and hair color. And yeah, they're actually pretty positive. I will take those numbers. Now we'll do a frowny face and we should get uh, hopefully a less happy emotion coming back and we're good to go. So that was a mm, 10 minute Power Platform demo using Power Apps Mobile and Flow to connect with the Azure facial recognition feature in Cognitive Services. 
If you found that interesting and want to, to dive deeper, I'll link to Paulo Flaherty's hour-long video, which dives deeper into the same concepts.